Hey everybody, this is Danny Ritchie at GR Research. I'm doing my very first ever Tech Talk Tuesdays. This little uh, video blogging or whatever you want to call this. Um, first go around, let's see what happens. Today I'm going to be doing a follow-up to Ron Bernays Frequency Fridays that um, you can see at New Record Day. He went over a nifty little trick on getting people to move their speakers well out into the room uh, in order to achieve the best imaging and sound stage layering that you could get from them. And he had them go to an extreme and slowly move them back until things began to work. That was a great idea. Uh, if you start at the front wall and have people moving them out, usually they'll stop well short of where they need to be in order to re really achieve the best imaging and sound stage layering. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. We're going to just start off with speaker placement. We're going to talk about room treatment. We're going to talk about what makes or breaks a speaker when it comes to uh, great imaging and sound stage. And then we're going to look at this little speaker here that is uh, the Super Mini, which is the imaging king of all speakers. Uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be an interesting one to talk about. And then uh, we're going to follow up with why that's important. Why do we spend so much time and effort looking at imaging and trying to achieve the best imaging and things like that. So to start with um, speaker placement. Um, why is it so important? Uh, speaker placement determines everything as far as the sound stage. If you've got speakers a foot off the wall they're always going to sound like they're playing a foot off the wall. Everything is always going to sound like it's playing from the wall forward uh, because the output of the speaker, uh, the lower wavelengths are going to wrap around the speaker, they're going to hit the wall, they're going to reflect forward, they're going to be part of the on-axis response in a slight delay. Uh, it's going to act as a slight time smear. Uh, it can also cause um, some cancellation uh, when, they, when that reflection arrives out of phase from the uh, forward output of the speaker. So. There's a lot there that's working against you whenever you put a speaker right up next to the wall. You're just not going to get to experience a three-dimensional sound field when you've not created one. You might as well have your speakers mounted in the wall. The next thing is uh, room treatment. Uh, the importance of room treatment, um, that's a paramount. I mean, it, the room is part of the system. You have to have a well-treated room in order to achieve a three-dimensional sound stage. If you've got room reflections and things bouncing all around the room and causing cancellations and peaks and dips and things like that, you're you're just never going to get there. And a great example is go to any audio show. And a lot of people go to these audio shows and they think, well, I can't wait to go to one of these high-end shows and I want to get to experience what high-end is really all about. And they go to a show and most of the exhibitors drop all their gear into an empty room and turn it on. And what you hear at a show is not at all uh, high-end audio for, uh, for, for the most part. Um, I'd say 90% of the rooms are not set up very well. They don't represent what's possible in high-end audio. So you don't really get a sense of what is possible at the shows. Now, some people some companies really do come in and do a really good job. They treat the room really well. Um, they know how to exhibit. And one of the reasons we've always done really well at shows is that we've come prepared to treat the room. Uh, we've set up some curtains like you see in the background here and diffusers and done things to try and control the reflections in the room and things like that. And we're able to achieve um, really good imaging and sound stage and things like that whereas a lot of rooms just you're just not going to hear it in a lot of rooms and the same goes for a lot of individuals out there I see guys posting in the Facebook forums and uh, hey look at my system uh, and you look at it and it's some expensive gear and the speakers are a foot off the wall and the whole front wall is completely empty it's just a bare wall it's the worst possible situation. Sometimes the speaker's sitting on a tile floor, um, you name it. I mean, you, you're you not going to get there in that situation. I understand a lot of people are limited on the space that they have 
but you can still work with those spaces. There's a lot you can still do to try and achieve better sound within the room. Don't take the room for granted. It is one of the biggest parts of the whole system. You must address the issues in the room. And sometimes that means tube traps to absorb the low frequencies. It can, it can mean you know, diffusers all down the side walls or in the middle of the sound stage. Uh, typically in this uh, setup here, there's a, a large diffuser right behind the curtain uh, that helps in the middle of the sound stage. All that stuff is really important if you're really trying to get to that next level. Um, and the other thing we want to talk to you about is what really makes or breaks a speaker in terms of imaging. What are the things that are killing it? Um, a lot of speakers truncate the spatial cues that are in the upper frequency ranges. They smear those. Um, they're not clear. A lot of the problems uh, often is because of low quality capacitors or cheap capacitors. Capacitors have a tendency to um, hold the signal and then release it in kind of a, a smeared effect and um, it truncates a lot of those spatial cues. And um, a lot of what we do when we're designing speakers is we're comparing different components to see what preserves the sound stage and the imaging and or what degrades it. And there's times we have a pair of speakers that we're trying two different crossovers on. The crossovers are virtually identical. All the values are the same, but we may have um, different capacitors uh, in one versus the other. And the difference in the sound stage can be quite dramatic. Uh, one may be a lot flatter and the upper registers a little softer, whereas um, the other may have a more expansive sound stage, cleaner detail, things like that. There's a lot that can be achieved there. Uh, the wiring, uh, the inductors, uh, the connectors on the back of the speaker, all those little things really add up. And um, also if you don't have a speaker set up to where you can hear those things, you're not going to hear those things. Um, if you've got a speaker setting a foot off the wall and you're thinking, wow, I've just heard that these new speaker cables really improve uh, imaging and soundstage layering, or you're not going to notice it. You're not going to get that much out of it because you're too bottlenecked by the room and the way things are set up and the limited amount of treatment. Even our own system, uh, there's been times that we've set um, this system up as a desktop system in my office. It's the same exact system that we have set up in this big room, but the speakers are uh, just sitting on short stands on a desk and there's a lot of things I could do to it that would never yield any differences audibly because it doesn't have the ability to recreate the sound stage. Whereas once you have something set up to where you are recreating that sound stage then those little things that you might change are very noticeable. Uh, tonality may not change. Uh, it may be completely flat, you know, as far as uh, the way it sounds. Either way, you'll change uh, capacitor in and out or um, other different things that you're trying. And if it's not set up to where you can hear it, you're just not going to hear it. Versus um, if you've got it set up properly, you could really notice those differences. Um, like this speaker here, for instance, this is what's uh, referred to as an open baffle speaker. And um, as you can see, the whole back side of it is open. Um, it has a wing type design. There's a, a long wing and a short wing. And all that's for a reason. All of that separates the front wave from the back wave. Um, it's a little like having a big baffle, but it's not. Um, and what you see a lot on a lot of the forums and stuff, you see people in the open baffle forums uh, posting pictures of their new speakers they're building and it's got a full range driver on a great big baffle and it's like they mounted it in a kitchen countertop. Well, that's always going to sound like it's playing from the baffle forward. There's just no physical way to get around it. Um, the sound is going to reflect off of that surface area and come forward even well down into the lower mid-range just due to the size of it. Um, the big baffle is always your enemy when it comes to imaging soundstage layering. You want to get away from the big baffle. Uh, as much as you can, you want to go to a smaller, narrower, uh, less surface reflection, but 
that also comes at a penalty when you go to just a small front baffle you're not really separating the front wave from the back wave in an open baffle application uh, which can cause a lot of other problems. It can cause a large peak uh, higher up in frequency and you'll get no low end extension out of it at all. So this is kind of an in-between. It's using a small front baffle so you've got very little surface reflection but it's using the side wings kind of like as if the baffle were large but you're just folding them back and that separates that front wave from the back wave it allows the response of the drivers to maintain uh, a good roll off at the lower end and a nice gradual drop and you can kind of tailor where that rolls off by the length of the, uh, the uh, wings even the short wing has quite a bit to do with the lower knee and kind of where it is and you want to kind of put that knee where it's where it's already rolling off and you can kind of help it maintain a flat response what you can't do is or what you want to avoid not doing is two wings of equal length you can do that in low frequency in low frequency ranges you can do equal length uh, wings and uh, the wavelengths that they're covering are so long they never really propagate within the, within the space when you have a speaker like this that's playing up in the higher frequency ranges if you have it coupled on both sides or a long wing on each side it'll set up a cavity resonance within that space because you're propagating waves within that area it's like you just put a megaphone on the back of the speaker and it's changing the way the drivers are loaded it's changing the output it's changing the way it sounds the cavity resonance becomes very audible so that's something you want to avoid um, the long wing short wing situation alleviates all of that uh, another thing too the, the crossover parts the quality of the parts um, again have a lot to do with um, the speed the resolution uh, the top end extension you don't want to do anything to disrupt those spatial cues this speaker is kind of the king in that department uh, it's got high quality parts sonic caps it's got a myflex uh, pure copper bypass cap in the tweeter circuit uses the earth RC um, XQ air core inductors, which are good inductors, it has one resistor, it's a Mills, Mills resistor. So it's not a complex filter, it doesn't have to be a super complex filter. The uh, natural roll off of all the drivers is such that um, not having to force the response to do something crazy, I'm just working with the natural roll off of each driver and kind of helping those fade into each other and cross into each other smoothly. So um, this speaker also has the uh, tweeter and the, and the mid bass panel uh, physically aligned, so they're uh, they're in line on both sides. So they can them as an acoustic alignment. It's the same on the front side as it is on the back side. So when you walk around the speaker, it sounds as, almost the same on the back as it does on the front, which means that it's creating an even room response throughout the whole room, and that's really important to maintain good imaging. You want things arriving in time and in phase you don't want things arriving out of phase and along with the minimal amount of surface reflection we have here on the baffle and the fact that it's in an open baffle and it's so transparent these things image like crazy I mean depth of sound stage placement of images within the sound stage the layering things like that are just extraordinary uh, because it's there's no box uh, the surface reflections are so minimized, it's high quality parts throughout. I mean, it's, of all the stuff I've worked on, it's probably one of the best speakers that I've worked on or heard in any way that really excels when it comes to imaging and sound stage layering. And then lastly, wh why do we feel that's so important? I mean, why are we working on imaging and sound stage so much? Um, other than, of course, it's great to, to hear it played back and to hear that three-dimensional sound field. But as an, as an engineer, we really put a lot of effort into maximizing that and working with that. And we have to have a system set up like this to where we can hear it. Um, there may be, for instance, uh, uh, different DACs that we're trying. And if the speakers were up against a wall in a plane, you know, to where you really don't hear a three-dimensional sound field, two DACs may sound almost exactly the same. But when you have it set up on a system like this where you can actually hear the layering and stuff in the sound stage, then that stuff becomes real apparent. Uh, another example, I had a preamp, a DOT Audio ba uh, battery-powered preamp, 
that the resistors are all uh, PRP resistors. And they're a good quality resistor, they're uh, 50 cents to a dollar a piece. And we replaced all of those with the Naked Boucher resistors, which are six to eight dollars a piece. So $180 upgrade to upgrade resistors. The difference was astounding. Uh, better clarity, for sure. But wow, did it open up the sound stage and the layering within the sound stage improved. And those are things that you will not notice if you have uh, a system set up to where it's not going to reveal those things. It's really important from an engineering standpoint that we can hear those things so that we can produce better products for the consumers so that you will then hear those things and enjoy them. If you haven't had a chance to really hear a sound system that really reproduces imaging and layering, I highly recommend finding yourself that opportunity. Uh, if you ever want to come to Texas, you guys are welcome to come by and you can hear something firsthand. That's all for today. If you have questions, put them in the comments section. Uh, post them on Audio Circle in our forum and give me your feedback and your questions. Uh, we'll see how this goes and if it works well, we'll continue doing it. Thanks a lot. Have a good day.